you tuning in. It's unfortunate that you're not here on campus with us, but of course, as we know by now, COVID restrictions are still hindering us from being together. But thank you for tuning in. I wish you were here on campus. But in the meantime, let me share with you some of the amazing things that are happening on our SCA campus. First and foremost, I want you to know that the students and the teachers, the staff, they have been remarkable. I give all the amazing credit and kudos to our teachers, especially in this time of COVID. They've been very resilient, doing online teaching, teaching on campus. We've been open fully since August, and it's been quite remarkable. My, our current enrollment stands at 616 students. I want you to, to know that we had actually 14 students to join us. They transferred from other schools at semester, so they came to us after winter break, primarily because they heard about our outstanding uh, education, as well as the fact that we are open when so many schools have not been able to be open and are there having online programming. But we are fully open. I want you to know also that I have 15 seniors who recently com completed their STEM certificate program, so they are being recognized for outstanding achievement in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we have 15 seniors who we celebrated last week. Additionally, we have the Missouri Student Journalist of the Year. Claire Smith is our top Missouri journalism student, and she was awarded that recognition recently. We have a top music and uh, choir program. Our music and choir students recently earned a gold medal in 17 areas for piano and music. They had the highest rankings in the 2021 uh, school year. Also, we have one student, Darcy Hingula, soprano, was named the 2021 Missouri All-State uh, Soprano and she was only one of six in the state of Missouri in the Kansas City Metro District to earn that honor after undergoing a very rigorous three-part audition experience. Grandparents, they, the students here at SDA have really been busy, lots of rem remarkable, momentous celebrations, including prom, which took place this past Friday. We had junior ring ceremony on Saturday, we started out outside on the field and then the rain was drenching us and we moved into the gym. But it was a wonderful tradition that the juniors were so happy to be part of. We have star night happening for our new, to welcome our new freshmen and, their, and our new parents that are coming on Thursday. The STA Walk of Fame and Color Throw is April the 23rd. We have an awards assembly coming up, our Senior College Celebration Day. Our all school mass for all of the students will be happening on May 3rd and we'll say farewell to our seniors. A number of graduation parties are scheduled. Our graduation baccalaureate mass will happen on May 14th. Graduation is May 15th. It will be on campus on our school field. And we have Kairos happening for our rising juniors on May 19th through the 21st. So many of our clubs and extracurriculars are doing an amazing job this year. Our STARS, our Relay for Life extracurricular raised $29,000 for cancer research. I'm so very proud of them. We also have a group are giving the basics extracurricular. They've been collecting products and hygiene needs for those uh, needy families, and they collected over 1,600 basic needs products. Again, I can't say enough about the teachers. All kudos goes to the teachers for the amazing work that they've been doing. All of the faculty and staff, in addition to teaching their lessons, they've been engaged in greater professional growth for themselves. I have three, two teachers and one staff member, and they're completing their master's degree this spring, so we will be celebrating them. One of our English teachers, Dr. Jared Rourke, has published twice this year, and his work is phenomenal in gracing many literary magazines. He's written essays on Mark Twain. All of our teachers and staff have been part of what's called our ongoing professional development program, which is spearheaded by our director of equity and inclusion of education, uh, Dr. Uh, Bree Walker. And in that program, our teachers do extra reading, such as we read the book Racism in Kansas City and had conversations about that. We also uh, read the book by Father Massengale, uh, Social Justice in the Catholic Church. 
And so you can see that not only are our teachers teaching, but they continue to learn as well. All of our new faculty members, first and second year teachers, have been involved in what we call faith faculty formation, spearheaded by our campus ministry department. We'll make, we are making sure that our teachers who are new and our second year teachers are fully aware of our charism of love that your neighbor without distinction. They're learning more about the teachings of the Catholic Church. And so I'm very proud of the studies that our new teachers and our campus ministry department have been uh, organizing. We have been knee deep in strategic planning. So a wonderful group of teachers and staff members, we have been doing this together. We're working on strategic planning. We have identified five core areas where our focus will be heavily concentrated on between now through 2026. And those include the following areas, high quality academics and excellent education and student life, fidelity to our Catholic identity, partnerships with alumni and community, diversity, equity, and inclusion, sustainability of a vibrant academy. So that just gives you a sense of what's happening on campus. Many of our students are preparing for final exams. Many of our juniors and seniors are taking advanced placement courses or advanced placement tests. And I just ask for you to continue to pray for your grandchildren. Your, daughter, your granddaughters have been working so very hard and I'm sure they're ready for spring and summer celebrations. And we can't wait as well to get you back on campus. Thank you and God bless. Hello and welcome. We are so we are so happy to be celebrating a mass here with you today. Though we regret that we cannot welcome our grandparents onto campus, we are excited to lift our voices in prayer together during this mass. Today we reflect on the gift we have in our grandparents, the wisdom and love that they impart on us to help us grow in character and in faith. We are grateful for our grandparents and the continuing impact they have on our lives. We will begin with Sing to the Mom.
The book of Proverbs in the 17th chapter says that the crowning glory of aging persons will be found in their children's children. How beautiful is that to reflect upon grandparenting and to look at grandchildren and to see the glory of God and the grace of life continue to live on. As we begin our Mass today, let's take a moment to call to mind our journey of life and to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You appeared to your disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sent them as you send us to announce the good news. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask you this through Christ our Savior. Amen. As we settle in at home, we open up our ears, minds, and hearts to God's holy word as Caleb will come forward to proclaim our first scripture passage to remind us that each of the 50 days of Easter to reflect upon another aspect in the 50 stories from the Acts of the Apostles. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 26 through 31. When he got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to him and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached fearlessly in Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go around with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers got to know of this, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off to, from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up and living in the fear of the Lord. Encouraged by the Holy Spirit, they continued to grow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
from 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 through 24. Children, our love must be not just words or mere talk, but something active and genuine. This will be the proof that we belong to the truth, and it will convince us in his presence. Even if our own feelings condemn us, that God is greater than our feelings and he knows all things. My dear friends, if our own feelings do not condemn us, we can be fearless before God. And whatever we ask, we shall receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what is acceptable to him. His commandment is this, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we should love one another as he commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments remains in God, and God in him. And this is the proof that he remains in us, the spirit that he has given us. Those who have given you life 
and those who have taught you love. And it's a good opportunity for us also, I think, to reflect upon the first and the second half of life stages. The teenager who dwells in the former, and grandparents who exist in the latter. Now, it's been said that the first half of life is all about success, about achieving goals and accumulating our identity, which we learn initially from feedback that we get from those who love us very much. And later, we get some of that feedback from those who don't love us that much. It begins when a baby looks up at the parent or the grandparent that holds her. When she smiles or coos or sits up, she gets applauded. Very good job. And then she crawls or walks or says her first word and the crowd goes wild. So she responds knowing that they like it. This will continue on in school days where certain behaviors will get rewarded and she decides or begins to decide the kind of person that she wants to pursue becoming. The teacher's pet, the scholar, the athlete, and it's there that we also find out the identity of others. Who's kind? Who's bossy? Who's funny? Who is better than the boys at the recess games? You notice who accumulates friends, who accumulates awards, who accumulates status, who accumulates a reputation, who's a brainiac, a geek, a pleaser, a cheerleader, a boozer, a beauty, who's trendy, who brings peace, who's loyal, who's reckless, and who's driven. Defined by our interests and our talents, then we begin to discover other things. Who's best dressed, or most resilient, or who throws the best parties. And we continue to get older in school and we attain other labels. The math geek, the drama queen, the tomboy, the fitness freak, the princes, the prude, the diva. As our reputation is formed, we begin to accumulate our identity. And it gets revealed in our taste in music, or our favorite vacation spot, or the number of college scholarships that we wrap up, the sorority bids that we get, the job offers, or the Facebook feedback. Now you think that it all might stop about then after graduation, but it doesn't. It continues. We keep accumulating. We accumulate clothes and furniture and art, and we decide who's best at multitasking, whose bachelorette party really rock, who's the magnet and the glue that holds the whole class or a group of friends together. And then what we accumulate gets put on display in our, in our homes through house decorations or children's matching outfits or the activities that we choose for our kids to be in. But then something happens when we reach the second half of life. Usually happens around the age of 40 or 50. It's deeper than a midlife crisis. It's more profound, and it's actually much more directed. It's a new way of looking at things. Our spirituality, or the way in which we relate to the world, begins to shift from accumulation to dissemination, from acquiring things to sharing things. We begin to downsize. We give away things that are important to us, and we decide to give them to those people who are most important to us. Furniture, jewelry, treasures. More significantly, as we age, we also give away more important things. The experience of the years, the wisdom that we've accumulated, the values that we hold and treasure, we hand down our advice to the next generation and we bequeath our dreams to those who follow us. 
The goal of the second half of life is no longer about success or producing an identity. We are now in pursuit of higher things, deeper aspirations. It's not about success in this world any longer. It's about faithfulness to something far greater. It's about our true identity. And that reminds us that we are connected to one another and we are connected to God. I am in you. You are in me. The Father and I are one. And it's especially about our connection to those who will inherit our legacy, children and grandchildren, the crowning glory of our lives. Those who will branch out beyond our roots and carry on our name. I am the vine and you are the branches. I will remain in you. So even if you're a grandparent yourself, you have grandparents. And you continue to carry on their legacy here in life. On this Grandparents' Day, I am hoping that our Academy girls and their parents' parents will have a good conversation about how you are anchored in faith and how you are rooted in family. How St. Teresa's Academy is a family of faith, a home that holds the values that you treasure so dearly, that our true identity cannot possibly be determined in the first half of life. It can be revealed to you through God and through those who have traveled the road before you and who want your journey to be even more joyous, far better than their own. So don't let your identity be determined by those who do not know you and those who do not love you. You need to create it yourself, create it in and through God, Created in and through godly people like your grandparents. So happy Grandparents Day. And let us all give thanks for where we come from and with God's grace where we're going in faith. This part of the Mass, we state our creed and what it is that we believe, and in the Easter season, it is proper for us to renew our baptismal vows in this season of new life. And so I will ask you, the community of St. Teresa's Academy, do you reject Satan and all of his works and all of his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. It is the faith of our church, and we are so proud to profess it in this season of new life. And now Gabby will lead us in the prayers of the faithful as we reflect upon what it means to be faithful to our God. Lord, hear our prayer. For our health care workers, first responders, and all that are striving to keep our community safe and healthy, that God may bless them and allow them to continue to share their gifts with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we come to the end of our school year, that the students, faculty, and staff of St. Teresa's are able to remain diligent in our work, sports, and studies. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those gathered here today are able to cherish the love of family and friends. May we always be grateful for the gifts God has granted us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our grandparents, that they may always feel the warm and tender love of their grandchildren. Help us as grandchildren to express how much we admire and respect them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of those gathered here today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we uh, pray today, and gratitude for Kayla and Gabby for leading us in prayers today, we are mindful also as we come near the end of the school year to pray for those who come to the near the end of life. And as we prepare our altar for the Eucharist, this table of love, let us be mindful of all the tables around in St. Teresa's community in the domestic church, in the homes of all of us that are also being prepared. And how we are called to share a meal and to share our lives, and to recognize that in doing so, we are companions to one another and companions to our God. He is in us, we are in Him, the Father is in Him, He is the vine and we are the branches, and we pray that we will always be rooted in that grace. We ask this in all of our prayers, through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare ourselves as we prepare our altar. Joy, 
every land, every nation, every people exalt your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we join them to say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread from the table and he gave thanks and praise. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, Jesus took a chalice of wine from the table, and once again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, our God, this bread of life, this chalice of our salvation, giving thanks to you, help us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church that is spread throughout our world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all who seek to serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection let us take a moment of silence to remember our deceased grandparents. Let us also remember the deceased alumni of St. Teresa's Academy and the sisters of St. Joseph. Lord God, bring them into the peace of your kingdom and into the glory of everlasting life. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, and the Saints, with Teresa of Avila, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be count heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we consider the root system of our faith as given to us in our scripture, and as we consider the root system of our families, let us also remember that we are called to be rooted in prayer. And that family that prays together, stays together, that family that gives life to others, always rooted in that sense of goodness, that goodness that comes from God. Let us echo the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but look at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your sacred will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. As we consider the gift that Christ gave to us, his first words after the resurrection, peace be with you, we are mindful of how all divine gifts are to flow through us into the world. Here in the little chapel, we won't be giving the sign of peace, but at home uh, we certainly will as we are with our, uh, our, our families and uh, with those that love us so much. I suppose we will here, just a little bit differently. And so as we ask the Lord's uh, grace to be upon us, let us ask for that peace of all of us. Flow through us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. For Jesus, your faith and your love and mercy, we believe your body and the drink your blood that is not in this congregation, but we bring us all to the Father and the Father. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and our soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those that you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways into the newness of life. We ask you this through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I hope that you will continue to enjoy uh, Grandparents' Day here at St. Teresa's Academy to your homes and to spend a little time from intergenerational faith and to, to discuss, I hope, uh, some important uh, values. I know that uh, Shabbat has offered a, a message here for you, and uh, there's a lot to, lot to think about uh, in our world today and where we go and what we pass along to future generations. So we look back to all that has been with gratitude. We look ahead to what will be with great hope. Thank our wonderful musician Susie, as always, and Hans for leading our song today. How beautiful. Thank you very, very much. And Barb back there behind doing all the work behind the scenes. Uh, thank you, and our wonderful uh, lectors. That's our community from here. Wishing you uh, there in your own homes uh, the best and uh, the great enjoyment of, of this time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Yeah. May Almighty God bless us today and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to go forth to live in His holy light. Thanks be to God. God.